Hey guys, it's Crystal, and boy, oh boy, I am so excited for this camera test. Between the iPhone 10 and the Google Pixel 2 XL, it's been a long-awaited one, but today is the day. We have that dual 12 megapixel setup on the iPhone 10 with a second telephoto lens, and this time optical image stabilization on both of them. And on the Google Pixel 2 XL, we only have one camera on the back. It's a 12.2 megapixel camera with an aperture of 1.8, I know we're gonna see some great things from both of these cameras, but what I'm actually really excited to test out is how portrait mode does against each other, because they both have portrait mode on both their rear and front cameras. I mean, what phone doesn't these days, though? <laughs> and if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know I love me some portrait mode. Let's kick it off with some portrait selfies, and one without portrait mode, and the Pixel T. Okay, no portrait mode. Ooh, we got that wider angle. Let's get to the rest of the pictures and see how they do side by side. I'm gonna start things off with a lovely portrait mode picture and the very first thing that sticks out to me is the color temperature between these two. We're getting so much more warmer tones on the iPhone and on the Pixel everything's just a little bit bluer. The Pixel's picture is also sharper. If we zoom into my hair, we got some super crisp hair on there. Where on the iPhone everything's just kind of softer. But the iPhone is definitely the brighter picture here if you look at my hat. It's a little bit overexposed. Around the Pixel's picture, we can still see the detail there. But I'm really nitpicking here because both photos look great. Like, really, the main thing you're gonna notice is that one's more orange than the other. There's not really any major portrait mode mistakes here. The edges look good. Since the Pixel's only using one lens for the portrait mode picture, this is what it actually looks like standing from the exact same spot as the iPhone's picture because the iPhone is using that telephoto lens to create the blurred background. And standing in the exact same spot, I told my sister to ditch the portrait mode and just take a regular picture, and here's what that looks like. Now that the iPhone is not using that telephoto lens anymore, everything just got a little bit darker, but it's still the brighter picture. Here's another portrait mode picture with the rear camera, and once again, everything's a little bit closer up on the iPhone due to that slightly wider lens on the Pixel's camera. But geez, colors, look how saturated the colors look on the iPhone's picture. And that's a big thing with iPhones this year. We saw it on the A+, we're seeing it again on the 10. These colors are just, they just got a lot more punchy and saturated looking. We're getting much more toned down true to life colors on the Pixel's picture too. And also our little snowman friend is looking a little bluer on the Pixel due to that cooler color temperature. And here's a third portrait mode picture. And while both look great, the Pixel does look a little funny because it only kept that middle section of the shoe in focus and kind of blurred everything else, where on the iPhone it just gradually blurred the background from the subject. I told my sister to take this one a couple times to see if maybe she was just too close or something that she was doing wrong, but it consistently just kept doing that same weird thing where it just blurred the center of the sneaker. But it's a good thing that we have the option to keep both pictures with and without the portrait mode after taking it. And other than that, the colors look great on both, and once again we're seeing that slightly brighter picture on the iPhone. And let's take one last rear camera portrait mode getting super close up to my face. We're still seeing consistently that change in color temperature, warmer versus cooler. And on the Pixel, we're getting that sharper picture again. The blacks are slightly more crushed due to the extra contrast. But the iPhone did mess up quite a bit here. First of all, this little bit by my hair on the left side, but also by my ear on the right and just my hair. Like that whole section just got blurred out when it shouldn't have. Now let's take a look at a landscape shot with the rear cameras. No portrait mode here. I feel like any phone camera that you pick up from this year is gonna do really good with this type of photo. It's not until you put them side by side that you start to see those small differences. And if you're all about that sharpness and more crispy photo, you're gonna go for the Pixel 2. I mean, it's apparently sharper and more contrasty, but zooming into the statue, you can really see this in the letters. They're just darker overall. But in terms of dynamic range and making sure everything's focused and exposed properly, they both do a fantastic job. And let's not forget that telephoto lens on the iPhone where we could optically zoom in two times to get a closer look at that statue standing from the same spot. If you want to do that with the Pixel, you'd have to do that digitally. And now I have a picture of my sister standing in a little gazebo. Color temperature isn't crazy different here, but we're still seeing that it is still slightly cooler in temperature on the Pixel. I think what this picture does really well is show that extra contrast and sharpness that we're getting with the Pixel. You can see my sister's leggings. The blacks are just really crushed there. And also if we move up to the inside of the gazebo, still seeing those wooden lines on the iPhone, 
and not so much on the Pixel. All throughout the picture, the iPhone is definitely softer with a little more detail in the shadows. And the only other differences I see is that, yeah, we have that brighter picture on the iPhone. You can see the clouds a bit more because of that. And also the colors are a bit more vibrant. But with a picture like this, I really do love that extra contrast and just more realistic feel of the Pixel's picture. Here's a picture of these beautiful Christmas poncetias. And once again, this is one of those pictures that both right off the bat, like there's nothing really wrong with either picture other than the fact that everything is slightly better exposed on the iPhone, which we can really see zooming into the wooden planter. We get more detail in there since it's not as dark as a Pixel's picture. The only other difference I see is a difference in color, which really isn't crazy different, but if I had to choose one, I'd go for the iPhone here, just because I like the way that it treats the white flower in the center. And seeing this picture just really confirms everything that we've been seeing throughout. Not only the color difference, but just that higher sharpness and contrast on the Pixel too. So with those differences alone, let me know which one you guys prefer in the comments below. Moving into slightly lower light, that extra sharpness from the Pixel really helps it here. It just makes that bare statue look a lot better in my opinion. I feel like when we're looking at the iPhones now, it looks kind of blurry. I also like that the numbers on the clock are easier to read on the Pixels compared to the iPhone. Even though we still can see it on the iPhone is just not as apparent as it is on the Pixel's picture. But because of the iPhone's slightly better exposed picture, we do get more details in the shadows and just more colors coming through. We can especially see this in the trees back there. Here's another lower light picture where that color difference is very in our face. Yes, the Pixel's picture is clearly the cooler one, but I do think it's a more pleasing one to look at. I love that the blue of the sky is really coming through on the Pixel so we can separate it from those little light bulbs, where on the iPhone, it kind of all just blends in there. But the iPhone is doing a really good job at keeping those details in the shadows. Everything is looking pretty dark on the Pixel. And looking at this low light close-up shot, I'm pretty happy with both. I mean, they both look really good. One thing that does stick out to me is if we zoom into that little light bulb on the bottom, it is definitely clearer on the Pixel due to the extra sharpness. And zooming out, overall, the colors on the Pixel, I love that the blue of the sky is still there while still keeping those warm lights. Where on the iPhone, everything is just kind of shifting to orange, especially those lights are just a little too orange when in reality, they were yellow. Now with these pictures, I want to quickly point out the perks of having that telephoto lens on the iPhone. Because I was pretty far away from these swans, I wanted to get closer to them, but I didn't want to lose detail in my picture. So just quickly use that telephoto lens to capture this. And I feel like that picture on the iPhone just looks extra good to me because now we have optical image stabilization on a telephoto lens. So things are super clear now comparing to what we saw on the 8 plus or the 7 plus. Now here's a complete nighttime shot of this beautiful Christmas tree. And now the roles are kind of reversed in terms of which image is brighter. The pixel is definitely coming out through with more light. We clearly see that in the Christmas tree, but also if we look in the background in the shadows, that tree in the back, we can see the outline of it more on the pixel and zooming out, the grass is brighter too. Now I was expecting really good nighttime shots out of the pixel too, because we saw that on the pixel, that combination of HDR plus and nighttime shots just always did a really great job. And now let's dive into the land of selfies with the front facing camera, starting off with the good old portrait mode again. And it's pretty much the same differences we saw in the main camera. If you're going for the more realistic look, you probably pick the iPhone because of that gradual blur to the background. But I kind of like that the pixel kept Gabby in focus too. Here's another selfie with portrait mode. And I gotta say, I always go for warmer tones, so I think the iPhones looks better here, but I don't like how it overexposed my cheek. Even though the pixel crushed the blacks in my hair, it kept everything in my face pretty well exposed. Here's a selfie without portrait mode, and even though my hand is in the exact same position in both, everything is a lot closer up on the iPhone 10, and that's just due to that wider angled front facing camera on the Pixel 2, which I think looks better overall, and it's just cool to have to get more people in the shot. Here's a low light selfie with my mom, and even though the pixel crushes those blacks, I just love how our faces are brighter and just sharper and more in focus. And also that wider angle again, don't like how close up we are on the iPhone's picture. But in terms of colors, it is looking a little green compared to the iPhone's. Switching things over to video, I am shooting 4K on both at 24 frames per second on the iPhone and 30 on the Pixel. Both seem to do a really good job in terms of stabilization. It does seem a little bit smoother on the Pixel, just a little more stable. Where on the iPhone, we're getting that faded look that we used to get in the pictures. Definitely more contrast on the Pixel. Honestly, if video is your main concern, you're not gonna be disappointed with either. It's more of what look you're going for, but I will say that the iPhone does take longer to expose those highlights. So based on those pictures and videos, which camera do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. 
Honestly guys, you really cannot go wrong with either of these phones. Like there's nothing that sticks out in them that makes them terrible in any way. They both take really great pictures. It comes down to preference and it comes down to what style of photo you want. If you want warmer, brighter, slightly more saturated, softer pictures, you're gonna go for the iPhone. And if you want pictures that are sharper with more contrast, you're gonna pick up the Pixel. Lately I've been taking both of these phones everywhere with me to take pictures and video, but I will say I am loving the portrait selfie on the Pixel and I'm kind of digging the sharper look to pictures. But let me know in the comments below which one you prefer. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.